Elon Musk is clearly a pioneer. Behind the launch of a range of groundbreaking startups, this South African born billionaire has been described by Time magazine as one of the world's 100 most influential people and one of America's most powerful CEOs. He co founded PayPal and he currently drives strategy development and design at two companies that he created Space Exploration Technologies, SpaceX, and Tesla Motors. He's in London for the launch of Tesla's Model S electric cars in the UK. Justin Rolat asked him whether making money was his main motivation. When I started Zip2, which was in the summer of 95, no one had made any money on the internet. It wasn't some land of riches or something like that. Most people didn't even know what the internet was, uh, including in Silicon Valley. I tried getting funding initially from venture capitalists, and most of them had never used the internet. And if they had used the internet, they were convinced no one would ever make any money on it. So our initial goals with Zip2 were really quite modest, which was really, you know, would we be able to buy enough money to eat and to pay for rent? That was that was our goal in the beginning, and uh, yeah. But the business did very well. I mean, you kind of rode the the kind of so-called internet bubble, didn't you? And uh, and sold the business for a great deal of money. I mean. The yeah. first one, it was like three hundred million or something. Yeah, yeah that, that by most measures is a lot of money. He'd made it a lot, and then you. Seems small course, these days. I mean, he's like look at like WhatsApp or something, or nineteen billion. Yeah. You know? No, absolutely no. <laughs> that, definitely, there are people making you know huge fortunes, but you know, I mean, that that's a lot of money. You then went on to set up the the business that became PayPal, and you sold the business. I was the least interested in selling PayPal, even though I was the largest shareholder of PayPal. I only had like twelve percent or something, and so. Uh, but, but it was still worth another three hundred million. Dollars, it, well, it? Yeah, yeah. My point being that by the age of 32, you'd kind of banked a fortune. You were a multimillionaire. You had no need ever to work again. You know, you could have spent your life as a kind of playboy. Uh, what, what motivated you then to kind of begin this adventure in all these kind of frankly quite bizarre and hugely ambitious businesses that you're now involved in? Well, I just like, I like working on technology that I think will have a positive effect on the world. You know, stuff that's going to matter and that if we don't solve it, then there could be some bad outcome for our future, for the future of humanity. When we started SpaceX and, and Tesla in particular, I don't think either of them would succeed. Why, why did you not think they were going to succeed? So, um, of course, Tesla, for people who don't know, Tesla is uh, one of the world's leading electric cars com- car company, and, and SpaceX is a, is a space vehicle that... Among other rockets things, rockets and spacecraft, yeah, rockets and spacecraft, which, among other things, is the first private spacecraft to link with the International Space Station. That's right. These are big projects. So you think both you imagined both of them would fail when you started them? Yes, I thought for the most likely outcome was failure. I mean, if you think about like, and start- yet you were willing to pour tens of millions of dollars of your own money into them. Initially, I thought, well, you know what, I'll t- I'll I'll take half the money and. And I'll keep the other half, and and then this half will probably be lost, and then I'll still have the other half. That was my initial thought. But then the companies needed much more money than I originally anticipated. And, of course, we had the the big recession in 2008. And so it was like, well, I could either keep the money, then the company is definitely going to die, or invest what I have left, and maybe there's a chance. Because 2008 was a watershed year for you, wasn't it? Yeah, for SpaceX in the beginning, the first three launches that we had failed, and the, the third one failed there in the summer of 2008. For Tesla, we had a lot of lot of problems and weren't able to sort of get production going and had all sorts of supply chain and design issues. And, and I remember at the time there, were, there was talk of Tesla collapsing. I mean, people, oh, thought, people were, imagined, yes. I mean, they, this, this adventure in electric cars had come to an end. There were multiple blog sites maintaining a Tesla death watch. And partly, don't you think that's because these projects are so wildly ambitious? You know, there's a kind of almost an arrogance to say, I'm going to transform the electric car business. I'm going to build a, a space rocket. I mean, it's the kind of stuff of boyhood dreams, isn't it? I'm going to colonise Mars. I'm going to mine asteroids. Well, I'm going to build a super fast hyperloop transport system that will get you from London to Birmingham, to use a UK example, in eight minutes. I mean, there is an arrogance in some of the businesses that you're involved with. Well, I think it would have been arrogant if we if we said we're definitely going to do it, as opposed to we we're, look we're aspiring to do it and we're going to give do it our, give it our best shot. Normally, it's governments that get involved in these projects of this scale. Why do you think that you know you can contribute to this? The thing that got me into space it's actually was that uh, I didn't originally intend to start a rocket company. It's just that you know year year after year I kept expecting us to advance beyond Earth and to put a person on. Mars and have a base on the moon and have very frequent flights to orbit. If you read the books or saw the movies, that's what you'd expect. And um, 
and just year after year, nothing happened. I thought at first that maybe it was a question of that the people had lost the will to to explore and do interesting things. I came to the conclusion that it was not a question of lack of will, and that in fact that that the public is very interested in human space exploration. They just need to believe that it's possible and and that it won't break the bank. Do you think you've created a vehicle that breaks through? you know, that will be the one? Because the big, I mean, nobody has yet created a mass market electric vehicle except very tiny kind of little runabouts for city use. Do you think you are now on the verge of creating a, a, an electric vehicle that really will have a, a mass market appeal? For mass market, we need affordability, of course. I think we've got a great car with the Model S, and it's been rated as, as the top car, if not, if not the top car, certainly one of the top cars in, in the world. Elon Musk there talking to Justin Rowland.